So it is the 10th episode of The Transfer Show. We've got new transfers to discuss and we've got a handful of rumours that we need to discuss as well. If you guys like what you see, please give the video a like. It does tremendously help the channel. Please subscribe if you're new. It does really help the channel. Let's try and push the 700 subscribers as soon as we can. It'd be terrifically appreciative. And please share this channel to as many people as you can. It really, really helps. But if you've heard of what we do, let's cover the transfer news in the championship in the last couple of days. As always, if I miss any transfers out, do tell me off in the comments down below and I will include them in the next show. But the first transfer I want to talk about is Dion Sanderson. He has joined Birmingham from Wolverhampton in a loan transfer. Now, Sanderson's played in a handful of championship clubs in experience. I remember when he was at Cardiff, he joined Sunderland last season at one stage when they were in League One. He's now joined Birmingham. I don't expect Sanderson to play too many minutes, unfortunately. I think he's a player still very, very young. You know, he's only 21 years old. But he's not really found that club where he's going to get a permanent place. Unless Birmingham have a lot of injuries in their defensive positions, then maybe Sanderson can get consistent minutes. Shane Ferguson has left Millwall to join Rotherham on a free transfer. Ferguson featured in a little bit of Millwall season from last year, but moved down to League One, I think it wasn't expected. He is approaching near the tail end of his career for me. He's now just reached 30 years old. So a move down to League One for me, based on his performances, does make a little bit of sense for me. Asmir Begovic has left Bournemouth. I have anticipated that. I discussed him my last rumour and I was right to say he has joined Everton on an undisclosed fee as it stands but I don't know if he's actually going to be the number one goalkeeper I think he's going to be the backup goalkeeper for England international Jordan Pickford for me so I think a bit of a pointless signing for Begovic unless he just wanted to move back to the Premier League I think that's probably what he wanted one transfer recently from Peterborough is Mo Weiser they've recently just lost him to MK Dons now in League One especially Mo Weiser has been such a reliable player bargaining every single moment where he scores a goal. Unfortunately, Morris has just not been paying dividends to Peterborough, especially last season, where I think he only scored three goals for Peterborough last season. Johnson Clark Harris has been the one who's been producing all of the goals this time. So he's moved back down to League One to join MK Dons. And I think MK Dons have got a real play on their hands. Jack Hunt has just left Bristol City to join Sheffield Wednesday on a free transfer. That one does make a little bit of sense as well. I think a move down to Sheffield Wednesday is going to be invaluable for him. I think he actually was a Sheffield Wednesday player as well, so he's now returned to Sheffield Wednesday. And I think it's going to be important for Sheffield Wednesday to have someone like him. He's got an abundance of experience, and I think Sheffield Wednesday will benefit from it. Ayu has officially left Swansea. He's joined Al Sad SC, I think a team in Qatar. So he's left to join the Qatarian League. And Swansea at the moment just seem to be in turmoil, really. They've lost a lot of their good players. They've not been able to renew their players on loan, including the likes of Gouaye and Hurahan. All of them have gone. Woodman being another one who's gone as well. So Swansea a little bit in trouble right now, unless they don't get more players in. Badu Ndai has left Stoke City to join Aris Salonki in the Greek League. Another player who has been approaching near the end of his career, reaching his 30s also. And it's just not been the same player for Stoke as he has been. So for me, I think that is an all right decision for them. Steve Seddon has left Birmingham to join Oxford. A bit of an interesting one for me. He's one I really wanted to see a little bit more. But unfortunately, he's in a fullback position. And fullbacks out of Birmingham are quite stacked in the moment. So it makes sense why Birmingham have let him go. But I think Oxford can definitely benefit from it. Matt Crooks has left Rotherham to join Middlesbrough. Now, I did expect this transfer to happen when I was in my car last week. I did say when the Millers got relegated, it was going to be difficult for them to keep all their players. They've already lost Old Sunde to Preston. And now, of course, they've lost Matt Crooks to Middlesbrough. One of their top goal scorers from last season as well. And what will Middlesbrough really benefit of Matt Crooks being in the squad? He is a relatively tall player and he will definitely benefit when it comes to set pieces. And Neil Warnock does like to play that way. So it's a dream signing for Neil Warnock. And I think he'll mould well with Middlesbrough. Fulham being so slow in the transfer window, they made a double signing almost out of nowhere. Paolo Gazzaniga from Spurs, a good signing for me when I've seen him play for Spurs. He's been a really good goalkeeper, great shot stopper. But the biggest signing being Harry Wilson, by far the most expensive transfer in the transfer window so far. £12.6 million. And stat of the day, it is the sixth most expensive signing made by a championship club ever. 
So there's only five other signings in the whole inaugural championship history that are more expensive than 12.6 million. I think it's a gamble. I wasn't really too impressed by what he was at Cardiff last season. He had an all right Euros, you know. I don't think he was amazing for Wales, to be honest with you. And I think going to a side like Fulham, who have got very high expectations, and Marcus Silva likes to use his wingers to attack as well. He's got a very important role in this house. Could 12.6 million be a bit excessive? I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's a bit of a gamble, and we'll see if it pays off for Fulham. But whilst Fulham have gained, they've also lost one of their players as well, Stefan Johansson, who was very important in Fulham's promotion season a couple of seasons back. He has joined Queen's Park Rangers, so West London rivals. He was really good for Queensborough Rangers when he joined in the second half of last season. They made the announcement when he walked into the picture when Queensborough Rangers beat Man United by four goals to two. What an unbelievable scoreline that was by Queensborough Rangers, by the way. And I think he would definitely take Queensborough Rangers to the best level. And for what I've seen with Queensborough Rangers in their preseason, how good they were against United. Chair was amazing. Lee Wallace was great. Dykes was great. Charlie Austin was great as per but also the likes of Roger Baggio, who scored an absolute screamer in that game. I'm so excited to see Queensborough Rangers this season. I think they could be a dark horse. But that wraps up all of the transfers made by the Championship Clubs. Once again, if I miss anyone, do let me know in the comments down below. But if any further ado, now for my favourite bit in the video, we've now got the transfer rumours. So one of the biggest rumours has just been flying around, and I just want to ask you guys this question. Is Gareth Bale going to Cardiff? Let me know in the comments down below. For me, I don't see it. I just don't see the prospect of Gareth Bale taking orders seriously for Mick McCarthy. I mean, he's had to start right at the bottom with Southampton before. So unless he wants to step back into those sorts of routes, maybe. But Gareth Bale and Mick McCarthy, it will be a classic combination. I'll tell you that. Now, one of the biggest regarding rumours is on the Swansea's managerial vacant position. Now, I did say John Eustace was the favourite. And it looked like that Swansea were about to confirm that he was the new manager. But due to personal reasons, Eustace made a dramatic U-turn and said that he is not going to be Swansea's new boss. He will stick as Queen's Park Rangers' assistant manager. But recently, Swansea have made talks with ex-Chelsea assistant manager Jody Morris. Now, that's interesting for me because he has that championship experience. Of course, he's worked alongside Frank Lampard where they both worked together to push that derby squad nearly into the Premier League. So I think it'll be interesting, and I know Jody Morris is out of work, he's not working with Tuku at Chelsea anymore. So I think it'll be a good move for Morris if he gets a managerial role, but I think for someone like Swansea, I don't think it'd be the most attractive role, but also it'd be quite ambitious and it'll be quite terrifying for him for me, especially with his first managerial role. But one thing I do want to mention, John Terry just today has left Aston Villa as his assistant manager position. Could this be Swansea starting to try and lure him into being their new manager? We don't know. If John Terry is a manager in the championship, then I am going to be very, very excited. Just as excited when I saw Frank Lampard managing a championship team as well. So I'd love to see it. Now we make it to the player rumours. Now the first rumours on Adam Reach. Now unsurprisingly, he's been linked with many clubs throughout the window. But the recent one is West Brom, which I think is quite interesting. Now Adam Reach, of course, is without a club right now. Following his contract with Sheffield Wednesday just being run out. He's 28 years old. Blackburn are also interested in signing Adam Reach. Very versatile player, as you know, he developed his career into a bit of a fullback position, pushed us alongside to a wing back, but he can also play as a winger and sometimes he can double him in actually being up front. So he can definitely play in an abundance of positions and definitely Ishmael would like that. But is he the right sort of quality player that West Brom will be setting their standards? You know, Fulham were aiming to make another signing on Rodrigo Muniz from Flamenco for a £9 million deal, but unfortunately, it looks like that that deal has been broken down. But definitely Fulham would not give up that easily. And I think Tony Khan is very frustrated with his particular transfer as well. There are a lot of comparisons with his Muniz guy comparing him to Ricardison. I mean, if that's the case, that we can have an equivalent of that in the championship, then definitely Fulham going forward would be very, very dangerous. I think Fulham are looking for a fresh striker, which makes sense why they're linked with Muniz. And I'll be interested to see if he does reignite some interest with Fulham. Now, one of the biggest stories today is on Ipswich Town. Now, Ipswich Town have made so many brilliant signings in this window, and I'm really excited to see Ipswich in League One this season. But if they complete this deal, I would almost dare say they've almost got the complete squad. They are very heavily linked with Connor Chaplin. And it looks like with developments that the deal could be completed this week. If 
Barnsley lose Alan Chaplin, it won't be brilliant for them, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I know they've lost DK as well since his loan deal has ended, but they've still got Woodrow, they've still got Freezy up front. They probably wouldn't mind getting another striker, you know, they have got Devante Cole as well now. So, Barnsley still do have an abundance of strikers. So, losing Chaplin, I actually don't think is too bad. Just the problem is that he's had so much experience with that Barnsley team. But unfortunately, I don't think he really got the same levels as he got last season as he did in the previous season when Barnsley went back up into the championship. Looks like he does want to reunite with Paul Cook. They did work together when they were at Portsmouth at the time. So I could definitely see the attractiveness of this transfer. And I'm really excited for Chaplin if he does move back down to League One. Now, Derby have been linked with a couple of players. Of course, they're very, very heavily restricted on who they can sign. They've really tried hard to try and sign George Edmondson, who of course they did have for a period of last season before he was recalled by Rangers. The Rangers only squeezed one appearance out of him, so it looks like Rangers are willing to let him go. Now, Peterborough are also interested, and it looks like Rangers won around 1 million for him, and I think Peterborough want to pay him for 1.5 million. It looks like Ipswich are also interested as well. So if Ipswich get Edmondson as well, then it's really going to look good for that Ipswich squad, I'll tell you that. And I think Ipswich are really trying to get on downs with a medical at the moment. I think Ipswich are the favourites of getting Edmondson unless he can get drawn away by Peterborough and potentially Derby if he wants another season there. But unfortunately, it looks like Derby have dealt with a bit of a blow trying to get George Edmondson back to return to Derby. Talking about another player with Derby, but this time a player being linked with a move away is Lee Buchanan. Now, he is one of the most young, youthful and most potential players in that Derby squad. Whilst he has some good qualities, he had had some flaws as well for me. He does like that physicality of a defender, but also he does tend to switch off a bit, which is a bit of a problem. But Wayne Rooney is adamant that he wants to keep his fullbacks, including the likes of Nathan Byrne and Lee Buchanan, who have both attracted so much interest in the past couple of days. And Rooney, I definitely would say, is adamant. Now, bizarrely enough, it's Nottingham Forest who are linked with Lee Buchanan and are interested of trying to snatch him away from their East Midlands rivals there. I mean, it would be really dirty from Forrest to do that. But if Buchanan is interested in a new challenge, then I could see a lot of pros working under Chris Hutton and Nottingham Forest. Chris Hutton does like working with young players before. We've seen it before in Brighton and, of course, Norwich and Birmingham as well. Eric Lehigh is an interesting signing. Now, Lehigh is not officially signed with a club. But he has been training with Nottingham Forest. Now, last season, he was all the way in Turkey, not playing anywhere near his football. But he was recently in Sunderland's camp, but then he left. And now he's joined Nottingham Forest's camp. Could he return to Nottingham Forest? I remember him back, I think it was 2016, 17 or 17, 18. It was one of those seasons where he had an unbelievable season with Forest. And definitely, I think he played his best football under Forest. So if he does re-sign for Forest or maybe have a more advanced role, like a coaching role, then I'll be very excited for Lehigh to work back with Nottingham Forest because I really think the two mould well together. One of the most eye-catchy rumours for me is Matt Grimes. Now, Swansea, I've been linked away with Matt Grimes because Fulham are the team interested. I mean, if they can get Harry Wilson in for 12.6 million and they're trying to get players in for Flamenco and they can get someone like Gazaniga in as well, then I think Matt Grimes could be very tempted to go to a club like Fulham with a good manager in Marcus Silva, one of the biggest squads in the league and one of the best quality squads in the leagues as well. I can see why Matt Grimes would be very, very tempted to move away. Of course, he's Swansea skipper, their captain. So Swansea, if out of anyone they need to keep, it is Matt Grimes. If they lose him, it is definitely not a really, really good scenario that Swansea will find themselves. We've only got three rumours left. One other rumour is on George Puskas. Now, you remember he moved to Reading from Inter Milan. I think it was two seasons ago where he moved from there, where he had an unbelievable European Under-21 Championship campaign. He scored 14 goals for Reading in his first season. But unfortunately, last season, he only scored four, which was quite a significant drop from Puskas. But to be fair, he did have a hernia injury for a lot of that season. So that is why Puskas has not been featured enough. Now, he has been linked with Serie A newcomers, Salantiana, who finished runners-up in Serie B last season. So there is a potential chance that Puskas could return to Serie A if that's what he wants to do and that's where his heart's desire. Then I could definitely see him being very attracted by this move. Not probably the best club he'd want to go for, but in realistic terms for the fact 
He has really struggled last season, especially with his injury. And for him to try and build back to the level he was in the season before, I can see why a club like that would be linked with him. Penultimate rumour is on Brennan Johnson. Now, Leeds were very heavily interested with Brennan Johnson after he had a terrific season with Lincoln with 11 goals and 5 assists. But of course, there was a loan deal from Nottingham Forest. He's joined Nottingham Forest and it looks like that Brennan Johnson will sign a new deal with Forest. Now, I'm really excited about that because I think Johnson could potentially have a bit more opportunity to join with Forrest. He's now got the goals and the assists from last season to back that. I think Hughton definitely needs to be very careful how he uses Johnson as well. Very, very good player on the ball. I saw him in the playoff semi-final League One with Lincoln. And for me, he was absolutely brilliant. So I definitely want to see Brennan Johnson feature more in the championship. He's not made too many championship appearances. In fact, I think he's made under 10 championship appearances overall. So I definitely think this season is the season where I think Brennan Johnson needs to have a breakout season. And the final rumour to talk about is on Harvey Elliott. Now... We know how good he was with Blackburn last season. He got the most assists out of any player in the championship last year. And he's been linked with Sheffield United. I mean, if Sheffield United want to improve their attacking um, momentum, then Harvey Elliott, for me, would be exactly the player that they would like. 11 assists he got in 41 appearances last year with Blackburn Rovers. Only 18 years old. I mean, if Sheffield United can really get the best out of him, then they can have a really, really good player in their hands. And I definitely think with the money they had from the Premier League, they definitely have the money to try and back it up to see if they can meet Liverpool's demands, which I think Liverpool are pretty open to selling Harvey Elliott in the summer. But that wraps it up for this transfer show, 10th edition. If I missed anyone out, let me know in the comments down below. What did you think of these rumours? And what did you think of the recent transfers? Let me know if you're forcing in the comments down below. But that'll wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please give the video a like. It does tremendously help the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't, or if you're new around here, it does really help the channel. Let's try and push to 790 subscribers as soon as we can. And please share this channel and this video to as many people as you can. That is how we're going to grow faster and together as a community. But thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary for showing you this video. And as always, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care.